Um, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. So sorry, uh, there will be a background noise because my husband is cooking dinner. But I have to film because um, I'll be working tomorrow. So I won't have time tomorrow. I just want to quickly answer questions because I, I have been receiving a lot of questions um, mainly about what's going on with our EI payments and um, I'm Honey by the way I have so many past vlogs before this uh, a comprehensive list of the benefits we are getting in Canada during this time like the journey of the EI CRB CRB so if you just want to get you know the like a background of all these benefits please watch that vlog so you will get like um, an overall knowledge of what's going on so let's start I just have I, I will update you about my case I reported my last CERB reports for September 27 to October 3 and the ones before that and I already got the payment but I have no news as to how my EI application will be after this. So I don't know uh, what's going to happen now after I submitted my uh, last report because um, it did show that my application reached a final decision but there's no other information besides that word, like only that word. Um, it, only say, it only says that my um, application has a final decision but I couldn't see anything else. So I'm going to update you once I receive more feedback from Services Canada and I just I just decided to wait and if nothing still happens in maybe 10 days I will probably reach out to them but as of now I'm just going to wait as to what um, is next for me. So um, but anyways um, Boho Check Boho Check I don't know if I pronounced it right but she commented in my, one of the videos she said that um, somebody got hold of Services Canada to, to question, uh, to ask about this and apparently what Services Canada said is that just to wait for the proper, like whatever you think is your um, normal bi-weekly report is to wait for that. So this, what she's saying is when you are already scheduled for the one week reporting period, just don't do the one week reporting, wait for another week or wait for another um, wait for Services Canada to fix the reporting period. Although personally, um, I'm, I have no problem of getting only a week of benefit just as long as I keep getting benefits. So I'll probably, if they will schedule me for another one week reporting period, which they did for my September 27 to October 3 reporting period, I'm still going to do it if they will schedule me for that. Um, and then, I don't know, just trust that they will fix it um, when they have the time to do so. So, um, and then I have other questions like from Alan Rua. So I'm going to look at these questions up here. So from Alan Rua, he said, can I apply for CRB uh, from my income from EI? So I know that if you have 5000 from our maternity and parental EI benefits, you can qualify for the CRB. But... I am not sure about the EI regular benefits, but um, part of the eligibility is if you don't qualify for EI, which is that you have exhausted your EI. So I'm guessing that you have exhausted your EI regular benefits. So that's why you are looking into uh, applying for the CRB right now. You must be able to, you may qualify if you uh, qualify for the other eligibility requirements because you cannot Mm, you cannot receive the EI regular benefits if you had if you didn't work uh, 600 hours in the past. So if you've worked 600 hours in the past, then you must have had a $5,000 income um, before you were getting your EI regular benefits. But if you will just tell, if you will just show them that you got $5,000 from EI regular benefits, then I'm not sure if that will be. Um, considered as an income because I only see that the part of the income that will be considered as income from EI benefits is from the EI maternity and parental benefits. So um, please try to apply for CRB. Um, when you said that you have EI income that is $5,000, so I'm guessing you have exhausted your EI, so then you probably will be qualify for CRB. 
So just apply and then CRA will assess your application. Um, another question was, so um, I'm just gonna flash his name over here if I find it. So he asked me if he can still qualify for EI even he, if he will go out of the country. So I saw that, so in EI, there are circumstances when you can be outside of the country and still qualify for EI. But in CRB, you have to be present in Canada if you are applying for these benefits. So to be eligible for these benefits, you have to be present in Canada. So um, if you have to be outside Canada right now, then I hope you qualify for EI because that's the only way you will still get some benefits. But also for a limited time, I will do another vlog about this um, in details. So that will be my next vlog. So please watch out and as to what kind of circumstances where you can still get benefits even if you go out of the country and then from dj can so this is a question so i think i got it uh, for ei one has to have no job then can apply then can apply for ei if you are doing a job and have less hours and before you can apply for crb correct me if i'm wrong if it, for EI, you must have had uh, lost j your job for seven days and at least seven days in the past 52 weeks. So right now, since everybody is just transitioning from CERB to EI and so we are still working, so the seven days um, qualification was when you initially applied for the CERB so it doesn't have to be now you don't have to lose your job now you can just continue your application from the CERB even if you're still working you will still qualify for EI uh, because in our ROE that we submitted when we applied for the EI or even if you are going to be transitioning from CRA in your ROE it will still indicate that in those months you were not working because you were laid off so but as of not right now all i know is to qualify for the ei you must have lost your job or you must have not been working for seven days in the past 52 weeks which is 52 weeks is like a year so in the past year within those period you were not able to work for seven days for the crb application even if you are still working right now even if you are not uh, laid off at all um, if you're experiencing 50% reduction of your average weekly earnings, yes, you can apply for the CRB if you also qualify for the rest of the eligibility requirements. And then for Ms. Viola Rose, her question was, um, oh, she has a different, uh, she's been passed around. Uh, her case is a different one, so I'm just going to put it right here on my side. Here, um... So she said, we were told to reapply for EI every Friday for Tuesday. This week, we were abruptly told we don't qualify for EI. So we applied for CERB and got error code. I think she meant CRB. So we got nothing at all for the past two weeks. So I said, um, if she got the error code M something something, it just means that um, M, I, I forgot the rest of the numbers. But... Um, the error code M means that the system was just busy or you applied on a very busy day. Uh, that's what one of the subscribers also told me. But if you get the error code uh, COV026, that means you probably qualify for EI and that's probably her case. So she said she called EI and EI co told her to call CRA. So this was this is a very, very... Um, frustrating case she has here she's been passed around so i hope um she will get to someone so but if you still can't get to services canada you can send them a service request form and in that service request form please itemize your situation without giving any sim number without giving any personal information so that when they see this they will know right away what kind of situation you are in so that the conversation will be quicker and um it will be your immediate concern will be addressed right away so that is the only thing really i can help you with right now just to submit the service request form and uh, i will put the link to the service request form or also, I will also put down the video that I made on how to submit the service request form in case you want to see it first before you do it yourself. Um, so that's the only thing I can really advise you for now, just to do the service request form and have an, a conversation with the Services Canada. 
um, Boho Chek. So yeah, she Boho Chek said that um, I will flash it right here. Okay, I will I will read it. So just want to clarify this one week reporting thing. I transitioned to EI from Service Canada after last CERB payment through them on October 3rd. I qualified as I was approved for EI back in April. I did my two-week report for October 4th to 17th and got paid on the 28th. I saw that my next report was due October 24th for one week, which concerned me. My report for bi-weekly would have been due on October 30th. I did some research on Service Canada Twitter to see if anyone else got this next reporting message as well. And there were a lot of people that also wondered about this and did get the same reporting period message. Someone got through to an agent, agent and he messaged me. Uh, in, on Twitter, this is what the agent told him. Hope this helps. You will get paid on October 28th, full amount for reporting period October 4th to 17th. And just continue doing your report as you would. So October 30th for us. The one week was for, was for anyone who might have needed the money faster or weeks changed because of bills or something. But to avoid getting paid for just one week, do your report on October 30th after 8 a.m. local time as usual. Just keep doing your reports every two weeks. So... That's the advice she has, and then that's the situation uh, for the others. So if you want to wait for the the for them, if you want to wait till the thirtieth, so you have to wait for your Service Canada to fix that reporting schedule because you can't really report for the thirtieth if they don't put that in your schedule in your reporting schedule. So I hope that will work out uh, for you and for everyone else. Memes on the he has a question about so her question is or his question is hello madam good day i have a question i applied to ei for regular benefits after my cerb ei i've done reporting on october 4 to 17 got the money this Thursday, Service Canada called about my ROE, ROE reason. It's leave of absence because of COVID-19. My question is, I'm not eligible to EI. Can apply to CRB if I'm not eligible to EI. So here's the thing. Um, I'm not sure what the reason is for your leave of absence. Um, if it was a voluntary, like it was your request to be absent or to go for leave, um, that you may not qualify for any of the benefits because f to qualify for any of the benefits you have to not have voluntarily left your job or voluntarily refuse to work but I don't know what the circumstances of your leave of absence the best thing to have a conversation with regarding this is Services Canada because they would be the one I did see I, I was trying to research there are so many circumstances there's so many ways on how the leave of absences can be considered as um, not a voluntary quitting or refusing refusal of work and there are also ways where it can be a voluntary refusal of work so I don't know exactly what your circumstances and how your leave of absence will be considered so please call services canada and i know right now services canada will be very busy so please submit a service request form first itemizing your concerns letting them know that this is your concern the leave of absence so that when they call you they will address it right away and yeah and they will know right away what your situation is so that's for memes on day and then i have uh, for from Jocelyn so she was asking can can she have EI even while working uh, where was the question Jocelyn Wakina Custodia Lucas can I apply for EI even if I am working so this is the thing I really was I was really searching online if uh, you can apply for EI while working and I couldn't find anything but that you have to have experience seven days of no work before you can apply for EI. I know with CRB you can apply even if you are still working so I'm not sure I don't think so to be honest so uh, I think the best benefit for you right now will probably be CRB. So maybe try CRB first. And then if you get the error co code COV026, then probably you do qualify for EI, even if you are still working. And then I have, because uh, in CRB, which this will address also the question of Mr. Robert Istukada. He said, pwede ba mag-work habang nag-CRB? So pwede, yes, pwede ka pong mag-work while on CRB. 
hindi ka lang po pwedeng mag-earn ng more than 50% of your average weekly earnings. Kasi once lumagpas ka po sa 50% of your average weekly earnings, you will not be eligible for the CRB. And that... Um, 50% average weekly earnings calculation is nandun po yan sa vlog ko uh, before this one. So please watch that. Uh, sa description po ng video ang timeline kung saan parte ng video I discuss about the uh, 50% reduction of income. So please watch that vlog. Carlos Martinez, Hanilis Villa Ferti in Canada. Okay, I should also point out that I received... Last Wednesday and 5.05 on Tuesday. I'm scheduled to fill out my next report on October 3rd. Oh, okay. Then that's that's good news. Thank you so much for this update. So, this is Carlos Martinez's uh, case. He said, I switched from CERB to EI after September 26. I also filed my report covering... September 27 to October 10 That's That must be October 10 However, I was also given a report to fill out Covering the week of October 11 to October 17 Will I be filling out reports every week or bi-weekly? So I told him um, I think they're gonna fix this reporting schedule But however, if they ask for one week I personally wouldn't mind doing a one week And then I'm sure they will fix it in time Paul Asidera How about uuwi ako ng Pinas this December? Pwede pa rin ba makakuha ng EI habang nasa Pinas ka for 3 weeks? So actually, mayroong mga circumstances na po pwede ka pong lumabas ng Canada at magkakatanggap ka pa rin ng EI uh, Yan po ang next vlog ko, so please watch that um, But at the top of my head, I can only remember na parang hindi ka pwede lumagpas ng it's either 7 days or 14 days Like there's a limit na um, and then there's so many reasons kailangan may valid reason ka talaga na kailangan mong lumabas ng bansa habang naka EI so um, I guess this is it for now I will do another vlog to answer questions and um, please uh, please watch out uh, so please subscribe and click the bell button so that when I upload the next video uh, you will be notified and then maybe at, in that video, video I will be answering your question because I was trying to answer questions I was trying my best to answer questions just typing it and then replying but uh, some questions really need explanations that are too long to type so um, I'm, I will be doing more videos just like this one so um, Please subscribe and click the bell button and like this video and leave some comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Have a good day and be safe.